Welcome to the 10th devlog of my Milkman game. It's been a while and I've added loads of features to make my game more fun. So what did I add? Well, not a lot went wrong this time, so let's try to breeze through this. To spice things up, I spawned objects, I used for loops to spawn civilian cars from a random list, made them spawn without touching each other using check sphere, added a road bump texture, more loops to randomly spawn road bumps, made the NPC cars run at variable speeds, which meant some crashed into each other, creating further uncertainty and surprises. I created a street lamp that could actually stand up. I used similar scripting to spawn the street lamps at regular intervals, changed the speedometer into a countdown timer to limit the time, set the color to red after the timer reaches five seconds, tried and failed to use OOP programming and ended up brute forcing it by creating empty game object counters instead. Created a deduction counter of one second for each bottle that fell off the truck. Created delivery spots to reward the player. Used loops to randomly spawn the delivery spots. And I added fog. Was that too fast? And did doing all of that make my game any fun? Well, here's a preview of what my wife said when I asked. So, is it fun? Hmm, but it's too hard. Why is the milk truck so hard to drive and why are the other cars so crazy? I'll get to that later. Okay, let's go through some of these more challenging features I added first. The common theme through all of these is I learned a lot about Unity and trying to work through problems via c -sharp scripting, but some things just didn't go to plan and I've still not been able to resolve all of them. So maybe some of you smartasses out there can help me. I'd realized that the gameplay was a bit boring and lacking in tension, and it was basically too predictable. Cars, obstacles, and the inherent bad handling of the milk truck itself will add to the tension. So I started off by deciding to randomly spawn the NPC vehicles to add an element of surprise. I start off with some pretty simple for loop scripting based on preset empty game object locations to spawn out of, but it causes the vehicles to just pile up. So to make sure the NPC vehicle spawned in random locations, I switched to setting a z-axis range where the cars would appear. I then created a list of the various NPC vehicles from which the for loop could choose from. But it was evident that a number of the vehicles were spawning inside each other and in the same spot. This next part took hours for me to figure out, so I'll save you the sob story, but eventually I was able to use a function physics.checksphere to check if there were any nearby colliders, coupled with a conditional statement to instantiate the NPC vehicle. There are still times it doesn't work, and I don't really know why, and perhaps one of you people can help me out with this. Another key feature I added was to create some unpredictability with the speed of each individual vehicle. Some simple scripting to add or deduct speed made this work, but because I didn't add a maximum or minimum speed, the vehicles went a bit crazy. Even after adding max and min values, the movement looked a bit jittery due to the larger intervals of change in speed. I fixed this and tweaked the values a bit more. The vehicles are kind of crashing into each other, but I kind of like it. I randomly spawn speed bumps for the player to avoid, which I think makes the game a lot more challenging. Sometimes they do appear close together, but I think it adds to the craziness of it all. I then spent absolutely ages trying to get this lamppost to actually just stand up. The point being that before any collisions it would stand, but it would then be activated by gravity after a collision and be able to fall down or be moved around by the milk truck. After trying everything from triggering is kinematic to creating a separate base, I was just making things worse. So I went back to Blender and created a single object including a wide base. In hindsight, I probably could have scripted something to activate or deactivate the lamppost, but I decided to move on. I then came across an absolutely key issue which I think a lot of you may be able to help me with. I was trying to cross-refer to variables and methods in different scripts, which I understand is a key component of OOP programming and the C-sharp language. This was to allow my time score script to read when a milk object had been smashed, i.e. to deduct one second, and to detect when a milk truck touched the delivery sign, i.e. to add 10 seconds. But no matter what I tried, I couldn't get the scripts to read each other, and I don't know why. 
I eventually fix this by creating empty game object counters to temporarily activate using boolean values. This was one way of allowing scripts to communicate to each other through Unity, but it just seems like a brute force solution and isn't really the correct way of doing it, I think, or the most efficient way. Test driving was important to see if my game was any fun and needed changes. I found it was a bit chaotic and random, but I kind of liked it. Some of the spawn points also needed to be tweaked. So this is about the time I'm comfortable enough to ask my wife to try the game, and as per the beginning of this video, her feedback when I asked, so is it fun? Hmm, but it's too hard. Why is the milk truck so hard to drive and why are the other cars so crazy? Now, I was able to make the car's handling better and also reduce the number of crazies on the road, but I noticed that this wasn't really the key feedback that I got from my wife. The key feedback was that she only clicked the replay button once, and you know, that was after some of my encouragement, so I knew that she wasn't inherently interested either in the game or the experience itself, and that to me was more telling than the contents of her feedback. Now it could be that my wife just doesn't enjoy this type of racing game, or this time trial type game, but I do strongly believe that whoever you are, it doesn't really matter what the game is, there will be a level of kind of basic interest if the game is fundamentally or inherently fun. And I did want to achieve this with this game, and I'm not entirely sure I will be able to reach that without overhauling huge parts of the game and that's something that I'm just not willing to do at this stage because I do want to move on in my game dev learning experience. I also realize that there are still loads of weird things happening, lots of bugs, but I honestly don't think I'll fix them because they add to the character of the game. The problem is I've played my own game a million times so I've no idea whether it's any fun or not. My plan is to wrap this game up as soon as possible with some different levels and publish it for free so you lot can play it and hopefully give me some feedback for my next game, which I'm pretty sure will be entirely unrelated to racing, or driving, or collecting tokens. Until then, be well, and if you've reached the end of this video, thank you very much. Please do like the video as it helps others find content like this. Bye bye.